So the first migration was from Macau to Shanghai. Then with the wars, the, uh, the Japanese War, the Second World War, they came back to Macau. My grandfather was one of them, born in Macau, went to Shanghai because of the war, came back to Macau. Is it because of protection? Hmm? Yes, because it's the closest Portuguese colony. You see, when China expelled all the foreigners, they all had to go home. If you were German, you went to Germany. If you're Macanese, you can only go to Macau. You can't go to Portugal. You have no family in Portugal, right? It wasn't a choice. So you're looking at maybe 3,000 from Shanghai that went to Macau, because now that is their hometown. He came back to his birthplace as a refugee. Can you imagine a Shanghai refugee going home to his birthplace? That's what he did. Yeah. Uh, when and how they went to Shanghai, we have we have no no idea. Uh, but you know, they live in Shanghai for a few generations, and then uh, and then because of war. Uh, because of their Portuguese heritage, they, you know, everyone seems to, uh, during war, they all moved back to uh, Macau when, when there is war then, so it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So what year did they go back to Macau? 1937. <coughs> so when Japanese invaded, uh, my understanding, my grandmother even told me that they were thinking of only visit Macau for a short period, then they would go back to Shanghai, but they never go they back there. Back. Yeah, uh, the, my, my grandmother only returned to Shanghai in 1981. But unfortunately, like my wife was saying, when the war, we went to church, midnight mass, and we came home. In the short time we were at church, our house was already occupied. By but, the Japanese. Ah, uh, the Japanese. Yeah, we were not allowed to go back into the house because they were already there. That was in, 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 Hong, in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, yeah. Yeah, our well, house was... A nice house, so they made it a house for Japanese officers. When the war came, he anticipated it. He shipped a lot of those things, statues and paintings, to Brazil. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't know what the story is. The, sh the, the person that was in charge for helping him to ship it said the ship went down. But, but we think places in Brazil might have the treasures. We then. keep finding different things on the website to, that for people sale. are selling. They really wonder how it got there. This is my uh, uh, my mother, grandfather, mm -hmm. and my mother, grandmother. They are from Shanghai. His name mm -hmm. is uh, Fernando um, uh, Xavier, and uh, and my great grandmother. Uh, her name is Lisa uh, Lai. Uh, Lai. Uh, that's her last Chinese name. The name. Chinese name then from Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And the other two gentlemen there is <coughs> the brother of my great grandfather, Eugenio Xavier and Vincenti Xavier then. Um, and then uh, they all live in Shanghai and during the war they, they moved to Macau and Hong Kong. Mm. My, I heard the stories is my great grandfather, after he arrived uh, um, in, in Macau in 19, 1937, uh, someone told him to uh, go to East Timor to open a dairy farm and I understand he actually died there. Mm -hmm. And my great grandmother eventually returned back to Macau she died in the 70s, I met her. And Eugenio Xavier, he was, uh, I think he moved to Hong Kong. He died soon after he arrived yeah. there. When you went back to Macau? When you went to Macau first time? During the war, 37, now I was seven years old. But your father was still alive? Yeah, but they sent us to Macau to be safe. Ah, During so your father don't go there? No. He was with the volunteers, uh -huh. all the refugees in Macau. And so that's, that's my mother and her six children. Mm. We were refugees and they were supporting us and they wanted all the family pictures of all the refugees you know, from Hong Kong the, uh, that went to Macau. The, My mother spoke beautiful Portuguese. I'm talking about a cross. Uh, what happened was um, a mother in the 30s, no work with four kids. During World War II, what do you do? Mm -hmm. So they abandoned the children, gave it to the council. They, they abandoned the children? 
Ah. So the council, the Portuguese council, took the children in ah. for safe haven. They sent them to Macau. Ah. And uh, this and, I just learned. And they were your parents. My, my father. Friends. Your yeah, father. My father and his brothers. And his brothers. Yeah. Ah. And so they were in Macau in an orphanage. Ah. I still don't know today what orphanage, but I have paperwork from the secretary of Macau saying, you know, we will put them in an orphanage. Ah. And I guess they were put in some orphanage. But what I'm gathering is after the war, I found out from the people who stayed with my dad, who I'm still, you know, my dad's friends, um, they kind of went back to their families. But my dad didn't have a family. His brothers didn't have a family. Mm. So unknown where they went or how long they stayed in the orphanage. What it was was a letter from my grandma, um, in hand and English printing, saying that you know how how struggling she was and she wants to take the kids with her, but um, she found out she couldn't take the kids, so she had a good friend who she left the kids with and said, when you get a chance, can you um, give the kids to the council in Shanghai? And then the um, youngest one was born in 1935. And this is all written in like 37 to 39. So uh, I'm guessing in um, the baby, um, since she was born in 35, um, was given to a French convent. So they took her in. And the French convent uh, um, was in communication with the council when my dad and his brothers were given to the council. Because I guess my dad was 11 at the time. So he knew where his baby sister was. So he told the, the I'm assuming he told the council, uh, we have, there's four of us, and one's in the French convent. And uh, I guess she's safe over there in the French convent. So they took the boys out of Shanghai, and sent them all to uh, to Macau for safe haven since Portugal was neutral World War II. Mm -hmm. So, and this is what I'm reading. And uh, there's a lot of correspondence looking for my grandma. There's a uh, Shanghai police report looking for a missing woman, and uh, uh, the consulate writing other Portuguese consulates looking for like Tokyo and. Um, wherever they had Portuguese concerts, I guess close to, mm, to, looking for, yeah. to there, looking for my grandmother. Um, she was nowhere to be found, so they assumed she passed away. So she was never found? Well, she wasn't found by the council. By the council? Yeah, or the police or anybody. 
So who knows what, what happened? You know, I mean, for her to survive in those times, who knows where she went. Um, but for her also to give the children away would be tough. Tough to, to be recognized as such, you know? Like, Correct. I mean, Correct. she and just wants to forget the story of it. Correct. Correct. And, you know, I mean, like I said, it's, it's a sad story, but yeah. it's part of our heritage. And, um, you know, lo and behold, I found out that my father, um, through my cousins, I guess, during the orphanage, played in a band for the orphanage. And they played a band there. Yeah, I guess there was a bunch of, bunch of bands for the orphanage. And for my cousin, who's my oldest cousin, um, told me that his father told them how they reunited with their mother. So what I'm understanding is that uh, they were playing for this dignitary ship that came from Hong Kong in Macau. The ship went from Hong Kong to Macau and the band was playing in Macau. And uh, my dad looks up and notices his mom walking across the bridge. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's mom. So he thinks, mom lives in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So during the orphanage time, I guess somehow he gets out of the orphanage or it's after the war that he goes and, you know, when, when my grandma's sister possibly takes care of him or they're still in the orphanage, I have no idea. So somehow he gets out and by himself, as a teenager, goes searching for his mom, finds her in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And uh, she accepts him back in. She somehow brings the boys back in, all back in Hong Kong there, and, and somehow brings uh, the baby sister, or the baby daughter from Shanghai, and they all become one happy family. Did. And what about your grandfather? My grandfather died in 1936. I died in, in, in Shanghai. In Shanghai. Yeah. Ah, he tried already. Yeah. He died. yeah. So, so you, it was your grandmother who couldn't handle the, the, the children. Correct. So she just sent. Correct. Maybe after. She didn't want to be found, probably not. Probably not, who, never, who, knows? who knows? Or maybe she went to find work, or, you know, and she couldn't take care of them. I, nobody knows. No one's going to know. Or with okay, the well, Macanese it's, community. It's a very typical story. Okay? It's very typical for a lot of, for a lot of um, people. You know, my father is from Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And he left Shanghai in the 40s with just his mother, Rose, and his, actually it was just his mother, he and his mother left Shanghai uh, during, during the war. His eldest brother and his, and the second brother joined the Portuguese army, but they joined very young. For some, I think he joined at 14 years old, mm. right? Was that very common? that happened to just because it was a way to be fed at least you have clothes you have shelter mm -hmm. and you have food to eat yeah and so that's why they joined um he joined the portuguese army i don't know at what age and then after that he joined the u.s army in order to become a citizen because right now he's already dating my mother mm -hmm. he says oh, we're gonna i'm gonna make it to the United States, mm -hmm. I'm going to join the army. I can become a citizen, and I'll take you home. We'll go to the United States. Aquele tempo é muito muito pobre, porque como disse o, o da tropa, da tropa soldado, vocês sabem quantos ele ganha? 30 patacas por mês. Mm -hmm. 30 patacas por mês. <laughs> Você diz, pô, 30 patacas é muito? Não é muito, mas o bom coisa Ele não precisa pagar a, 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 a renda, não precisa pagar a, o almoço, nada. So you married there in Hong Kong? Uh, no, I was married after the before the war, mm -hmm. and my husband uh, sort of was like the was like the they called it the Royal Hong Kong Volunteer Corps. Mm. And they tried to bring them in, gave them the order of being like, like the soldiers of of the army. He was Englishman. You no, know, he's like me, Makish. He was a Makish. And what is his name? Clementino Lopez. Clementino. Clementino Lopez. Lopes. So Lopez is the family name of your yes. husband. And what is your family maiden name? My name is Da Rosa. I with the Rosa. Ah. So my two brothers. Passed away. I have three brothers. Mm -hmm. Passed away, and I still have one living in 
in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in Japan, a Japanese sent him to Japan. Mm -hmm. And there he worked in the mines mm -hmm. for the Japanese, of course, that he was a prison of war. And from Hong Kong, they went made to Macau. They got into Macau. So they were coming from, from Port Shanghai. From Shanghai. They Shanghai. took a train. Ah, okay. They took a train, and I remember she would tell me about the numerous stops that it would make, and the soldiers would come inside the train and spot check everybody. So this what this was when the communists took over yes. in forty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I enjoyed it. There was a typhoon. Mm. You remember a typhoon? I remember that because the next day you could see in, into their rooms. You know. What do you mean? The, broken. the wind had broken everything, and then it was it was like looking into a dollhouse. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it was a strong typhoon. Yeah. Which year? Ninety. It was 1937. 37. You remember the trip when you went from Shanghai to, to Macau? Yes, I didn't like it. You, how you went? You go by boat? By boat. Why you didn't like it? I think I was, I was seasick. Seasick? Mm -hmm. how, how many days it took? I don't remember. You were very young, huh? Seven. Wow. So you, you just remember you were seasick? Yeah. That's all. And... Do you remember the day you arrived in Macau? No. No? No. No. You just remember, what do you remember of Macau? You stayed there how many years? The time that the war no, lasted? a couple of months. Oh, you think of a month only. So you, your memories of Macau are none? It was all right. Just the typhoon? The yeah. typhoon, the family. It's nice to meet you. You see your auntie, aunties and the typhoon? My aunts, yeah. When the Japanese first landed in Hong Kong, he came to the, uh, our district. And my mother, the first thing she did, she went out and said she wants to see the commanding officer. Because mm -hmm. she was white. She said, I was going to arrest her. I think she was British. He said, oh, I'm Portuguese. Then finally, he put a sign there. Yeah, yeah, they put the sign on the door. Do right? not molest this house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish I remembered the story. Um, but they did not want to let them in. Uh huh. Yeah, they didn't want to let my grandmother in. And so my grandmother, being a very outgoing person, she ran up to a tall British soldier mm -hmm. and just, I, I think she gave him a big hug and she said something to him. And he looked at her and apparently he was the right person to do it to. And, and she got my, got my father and they said, welcome to Hong Kong. And from Hong Kong, they went made it to Macau. So they settled in Macau as refugees. And they stayed in the, all I know is they stayed in an area, they said it was the dog track, the dog racing track. Yeah. That's where they stayed. And he said, yeah, we lived there. The food was terrible. You know, we um, didn't eat very well. Um, he said, every day we would have salted fish and a little bit of rice and if we were lucky otherwise it would be something else and um, talk about playing playing football against the Chinese so it was the the Shanghai boys the, the Portuguese boys playing against the Chinese and you know it's just a little rivalry how they would go to Hong Kong to meet girls mm -hmm. you know, take the take the ferry to meet girls which is how he met my, my mother. I learned Portuguese in the time of the war. In Macau, at that time of the war, Professor Adelino Conceição. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the name, Adelino Conceição. He taught us refugiados, era, era refugiados, ensinamos nos português, proprio português. We must patois de Macau, nos de Hong Kong, fala mais patois de, de Macau. Prohibido. Era proibido? Proibido da escola, escola de Macau. Por quê? Porque é língua baixo. 
Ah. É, 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 é próprio língua, né? Só aquela vela, vela de Macau. Eu trabalho há 16 anos. Por que não quis ser uh, refugiado, uh, assistente pública do governo? Eu queria ser índios dela, uh, Antônio Colasso e Vicente, porque nós, nós estamos em 1952 no mesmo campo dos refugiados. Fugiados. Número 3, uh, atrás de Hotel Red, hum. Red Hotel. Eram portugueses, eram os, eram portugueses. vocês eram portugueses, Mas são portugueses. Os britânicos, os americanos, não dá, dá. Não, isso não. Não. Isso é, é, e, é e diferente. Outra coisa, e outra coisa também é, não é tão bom, porque a maior parte dos refugiados não trabalha, hum. porque tem assistência. Pois, isso tem é pro... casa, tem, tem comida, por que quer trabalhar? E isso criou alguma inveja, de, algum problema com os locais, com os maquenses locais, não Sim, foi? Sim, certo. Diziam, eles estão a dar um bom tratamento, e nós? E nós, como? Hum. Em vez de welfare, deve ser workfare. Workfare, yeah. Tem que, fazer um, tem que fazer um serviço. Tem que fazer o um serviço. Não, não. You were sheltered where? You remember? Uh, Fighting K. Fighting K. You know that? Are you familiar with yeah. Fighting K? Yeah. Near the horse race, the uh, yes. dog hunt yeah. race track. Yeah. Near the room. And you stayed there how many years for? Uh, let's see, 42 to 45. So it's about three. Three years. Salvation is in Macau during the war. Yeah, I went to high school. Mm -hmm. High school. So refugiado for three times in Macau. Mm -hmm. So lembrar uma coisa. For me, for me, for me. <laughs> Young teenager mm -hmm. and not much to eat. Eh? Yeah. Most of us uh, refugiados they mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Ficava uh, no centro, uh, about 10 refugee centers mm -hmm. where they are fed uh, and housed. Very, very generous Macau government. Yeah. Uh, they were very generous to you. Very generous. Open the door. Most of our compatriots in Hong Kong are going to starve under a Japanese government. So come to Macau. We will look after you. Mm -hmm. So, we were. And then when the Americans bombing Hong Kong, everyone slowly go to Macau. Eh? And the government chartered a little boat, a big boat rather, mm -hmm. and all refugees from Hong Kong can go to Macau and live in refugee centers. Mm -hmm. I remember the American planes coming down. Oh, yeah? And shooting... In Macau? In Macau, yeah. You because, remember that episode? Yeah, because they, they thought that the Portuguese were going to give the boat away or something to yes, the Japanese yes. food. Yes, yes, they bombed Macau. Yes, I saw that night. I saw these shrapnels moving in the air and I saw bullet casings, I seen all that, yeah. You see them on the floor? Uh, yeah, on the streets and people bring them, people are collecting them and they're bringing them home. <laughs> but you saw actually the planes, you remember? Yeah, the I planes? saw the planes, yeah. And I even saw the dogfight between American planes and Japanese planes. Really? But it was so little, you know, but everybody was lining up in the docks, looking, you know, because it was really far away, but you could see, you know, occasionally you see some, a puff of smoke and some plane comes down. One plane comes down. <laughs> and then there was all the epidemics, cholera. One, I had one brother died from cholera. There, in Macau? Yeah, yeah. He was 10 years old that time. He was about 11, yeah, 11. yeah, yeah. Liberato, yeah. So many, many children, there was many people dying at that time because of sickness? Oh, yes, yes. And they didn't have the vaccines, you know, so... Right, times are tough. <laughs> but you remember that happening to your brother? You remember or you just... I remember, remember. him going to the hospital, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't see him okay. pass away or anything.
We stayed in Cane Road, 35 Cane Road, where Mauricio had his his uh, gymnasium, 35 Cane Road. Yeah. And I remember a Japanese soldier used to uh, have rats, and he used to dry them to eat or meat. Mm -hmm. And then at the surrender, I remember the soldiers, all the Japanese soldiers marched down uh, by the British, you know, when they surrender. Mm. And I will remember the bombs landing in the harbor too. Mm. My, my father left Hong Kong uh, when he was eight years old. And then Japanese invaded when he was 11. Then he went back to Macau. And in 1946, he was, he, he was, he, he, he was, he was, 46, he was already 18 years old. And there was no work in Macau. So he went to Hong Kong to become a policeman and then worked for a correctional service. And then, uh, you know, timing. If he, if Japanese not invaded, he probably have more schooling, you know, oh, yeah. better life. When the war ended, they came back to Hong Kong. Their house was demolished. What the Japanese didn't take, the Chinese took for wood, wood, took the doors, took the window frame, took everything because they needed to keep warm. So the house was a shell, but luckily... The uh -huh. So uh, we lived in Kowloon, then the Second World War, and we all went to Macau as refugees. Mm -hmm. then, because uh, the Japanese occupied... Right, they mm -hmm. occupied Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And we came back to uh, Hong Kong, I think it was uh, 1945, mm -hmm. think, about. And then we, uh, we had to move in with our cousins mm -hmm. until we found our own accommodations. Then I also remember when Hong Kong was liberated and uh, the Macanese people threw a party and uh, I, I started seeing a lot of these foreign coins come in, Australian coins and we started getting chocolates. Mm -hmm. It was uh, so amazing. I said, oh, I haven't tasted chocolate in years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> getting chocolates, candy. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was quite horrible. And he didn't talk about it much, my father. He didn't talk about it much. My grandmother didn't talk about it much either. Mm -hmm. She never really liked to talk about it. It was pretty rough for her because her husband was killed in Shanghai. Uh, he was hit while coming home from work. He was riding a bicycle and he was hit by a bus or something like that. And he was killed then. And so that's why she came alone. Uh, as far as I understand, there is a very, what it seems like a very typical relationship to uh, family members after the war mm -hmm. uh, there's very small all attachments seem to be severed mm -hmm. uh, so I think after World War two there was either more uh, connection to family or more distance it was sort of one or the other and so from my experience it's been that uh, we never asked and it was never spoken and uh for me, I was born in the uh, 1960s and uh, we tried not to become Portuguese uh, because I was afraid that I have to fight in Angola. <laughs> to the colonial war, yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah, and uh, you know, by that, you know, I was, I was born in Hong Kong, educated in, in, in English in Hong Kong, couldn't even speak a, you know, a word of Portuguese, fighting in Angola would be certain death. <laughs> yes. Uh, but luckily, you know, the war ends in 1970. <laughs> Well, I must tell you this incident is funny. Well, war was coming, and we had all the Allies, soldiers, to help to, for the war. Of course, I don't know much about it, but I know because my husband is in the corps in the, as a soldier. Yeah. And so that was the last they had. All, all the trains were commandeered. We had real soldiers from uh, Australia, Canada, England. We know that we cannot win, but we had to show face that we had sort of some protection. So that they had the last day when they all met, they were, this is the last mm. meeting. So, and it was about six o'clock in the morning and the last train was about to leave. And in, in fact, they hooted to take the train, said, ooh, 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 ooh. And out came an old lady, about 
she must be about 70, in a nightgown, in a pigtail. She put no time to put her denture. And she called out, Horatio, Horatio, how can you go to war without your rifle? How can you fight? Here is your rifle with me. Everybody laughed. How can a soldier go out fighting? <laughs> Fomos a explorar o mundo O mundo nos separou Guardamos sempre bem fundo No coração o lugar que nos criou Levamos a língua de pátua E a bandeira da nossa terra Espalhados por multidões Vivendo em várias nações Mas somos todos da mesma raiz Temos primos no Brasil Na França e Canadá Temos tios na Austrália Na Alemanha, Inglaterra Irmãos da América do Norte Sobrinhos em Portugal Temos raízes bem fortes Temos raízes em nosso Macau 